How's it going YouTube? Welcome back for another episode of Project with the CK2610. Um, so today what I'm going to be doing is installing one of these little 12 volt sockets. Um, sounds kind of trivial, but uh, I'd like to charge my phone while I'm on this. I know that sounds very millennial of me, but I found that the best ear protection when you're brush hogging and doing whatever else on the tractor is a set of headphones, especially these beats here that actually do a good job of uh, working like earplugs so unfortunately those seem to drain the battery down my phone pretty fast so i wanted to have a way to be able to charge my phone in case i'm out doing whatever um there's a bunch of different types of these um this one actually seems to be rather cheap and chintzy so we'll see if i have to replace this in the long run um you know, there's the regular 12 volt ones. This one here is USB-C and regular USB on it. Um, my Android phone is all USB-C. All my phone charger is USB-C. So I figured I'd go this route. <clears throat> um, so I just figured I'd make a video of walking through installing this on here. Um, my dad's 2038R Deer has a 12 volt on it. And it's come in handy quite a few times of charging phones, especially if you're you know, doing a bunch of work off the tractor and you got the tractor shut off or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, so when I install this, I'm going to go around with a test light and check it and try to find a battery hot 12 volt source. Um, so I guess there's always the possibility of it running the battery down over a long time, but I'd like to be able to use it without the tractor on. Um, and the other issue I personally have a lot too is not just the headphones and the Bluetooth draining my phone down, but where I live, I fight for cell service all the time. You go a quarter mile that way, you got cell service. You go a quarter mile that way, you got cell service. Here, nothing. Um, so, you know, my phone searches for service a lot of time and that, that does a, a good number on your battery. So, um, yeah, so anyways, I just figured I'd walk through the installation of this and, uh, you know, hope you join me for the ride. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe too before we begin. All right, so now I'm sitting up here on the operator station and just trying to get an idea of where the best place to put this is going to be uh, without being in the way. Um, so my first thought was, you know, the key's here and it's never once been in the way at all. So I've got a blank space on this side is that I could, you know, kind of mirror the key. Um, same thing, this whole area here underneath you know i mean again my leg is nowhere as near that when i run the clutch same thing over here with the brake and stuff so that could be a good option uh, my other thought too was trying to find somewhere back here near the seat that i could do it because there is times where i do like to have my phone sitting in this pocket sometimes um so i guess we're gonna have to decide as far as what makes the most sense for robbing um power um now when i installed my lights and my rear led um what i ended up doing was actually taking the floor mat up as well as the plastic trim around here and ran here's actually the relays for it and the wiring here runs up to my switches that i've installed um which a little sidetrack here for a second but these knockouts that are up here from the factory are a regular size toggle switch. So I went to West Marine and way overpaid for these, but they had the light on. So let you know when they come on. Uh, and they snapped right into the factory knockouts. I didn't have to cut any holes, nothing. So those are the Harbor Freight. Oh God, the name escapes me for a second. These ones are the, um, these are floods and the rears of the 14 inch spot flood combo or whatever um they came with a little round switch you know which obviously at that point you could drill a hole but why drill a hole when you have a knockout right here that you can use all right so after doing some feeling around there is a ton of room behind this panel um this metal brace for the steering column does kind of come up by this seam here but then once you get past that uh, again, right here, there's also a ton of room. And we also have all the electrical, the relays are right here already for the machine. 
So I'm thinking, I just put it up in here. This is probably gonna be the easiest bet than trying to find somewhere uh, back here, further back in the operator station. I mean, maybe it would fit down in here or something, but then I'm into the, um, you know, control for the uh, PTO and stuff. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just nervous about it being back here. So I think I'm gonna give this a shot. So for the next step, I'm going to raise the hood and take this bolt out, this bolt out, the one on the other side. I, if I remember right, I think there's a couple up here and uh, try to get this gauge moved up enough out of the way that I can A, get a better look at the wiring and B, uh, get a clear shot for drilling my hole. All right, so now that we got this thing uh, loose, I'm not really gonna try actually taking it off because I don't know how the steering wheel comes off. For my test leg ground and the starter, always make sure you actually check it first to make sure your ground's good. Nothing more frustrating than searching around, finding out that uh, you've had power all the time, but your ground sucked. So I'm just gonna start poking around here until, yeah, see right there has power. And that relay has power. How about that pin? Nope, nothing there. So, like I said, I'm gonna just poke around for a minute here and try to find something that has power. That might be a good source to rob from. I don't really want to use this only because that is pretty large wire. Um, but what I might actually do is I could probably just rob power right here at this relay from my uh, from my lights because one of these here uh -huh, is hooked straight to the battery. Anyways, it runs down here uh, next to the hydraulic hoses for the steering goes under the radiator and then they come up and they actually are fused and stuff right there. So because that is already fused, that might not be a bad choice. Although, I wonder what that one is right there. Nothing. Oh, there's battery power right there and there. What does this do? Ah, uh, there's a fuse in that too. Yeah, that's a, that's a fuse right there, so. Oop, hang on, false alarm, we got one more. And it's got a blank plug in it. It sits right up here under the, they're hiding behind the exhaust. Nothing that side. It's so much easier if I wasn't holding this phone. All right, and that does not have battery power. All right, so like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this um, loom apart here, or heat shrink, I guess it is, and um, solder and shrink and splice into my battery power or battery positive wire. And then um, at that point, it's already a fused source. Um, this did actually come with a small fuse here. Um, I really hate these style of fuses though. Um, not only are they getting very difficult to find, but these fuse holders kind of suck. See, I don't know without taking it apart. I don't know if I can get it with one hand. What, uh, what size it is, that's the other issue too. You know, a lot of times they'll put a huge fuse in here. just so you don't uh, have to worry about blowing it. There you go. Yeah, see these tube fuses, I, like I said, these suck. It's a 10 amp. Focusing on my fingers right now, but right there, 10A. So 
to me, even that seems awfully excessive for this, but maybe what I'll do is I'll just uh, cut this ring terminal off that's on the end here. All right, there we go. So I'll cut that ring terminal off and uh, splice that in here. And then our ground can simply go really anywhere. And that bolt, as long as it's uh, M6 thread, which I think it is, so it's small enough to get through that ring terminal, um, will be a perfect ground. So let's make it happen. <clears throat> All right, so for symmetry purposes, I guess I decided to put it here, um, just like the key is. So I'm gonna take a rough measurement real quick as far as where the key sits in relation to uh, this edge and this edge so I can get an idea of my center before I drill my hole. So we are approximately inch and a half down the center. An inch and a quarter from that edge. So, a great time to have a sharpie, but since I don't have one, I'll scribe a mark there, an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter, and that gives me my target. And uh, for the hole, I'm using an inch and an eighth fastener style bit. I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, this is just slightly over an inch. So I guess if you had an inch and a sixteenth bit, that would probably work out great. But I think this is going to work out just fine, especially on the soft plastic. Um, one last check, make sure there's nothing back here. And there's no turning back now. clean hole, nothing to even deburr, actually. So, let's see how she fits. That's, that's perfect. Um, probably could have gone down just a little bit more, but that fits perfect. It's tucked up. It's gonna be tucked up out of the way, so when it's not in use, it's out of the way of my leg, and I really should never hit it uh, any other time either. So perfect. Now I'm gonna wait and install that until I get my wires done, only so because I'll need to know my positive and negative. It'll be a lot easier to feed the wires through, attach them first, then uh, thread this back in. So let's get on the wiring. All right, so. The second I dove my utility knife into this uh, heat shrink here to start cutting it back to gain power to it, I remembered that the switch has to have constant power for it to work. So, since I've only got to go from here to here, it makes way more sense to rob my power from that than on the relay all the way down there. So, that's what I'm gonna do. So all I'm gonna do here is pinch these tabs on the back side of the switch that I've got. So I can push it back up here. And now I can get access to the wires. Didn't mean to do that, that scared me. Okay, so our white wire right here is our positive. So this is gonna make things a whole lot easier. So, what I want to do is disconnect the wires quick. Of course, you see that. Now it's going to embarrass me. All right. So disconnect those. Pull this through so I've got a little more room to work with it. All right, so now I've got our wires pulled through and disconnected from our switch. All I'm going to do is... Strip a little bit of loom off of this. Same stuff that comes on all this uh, PVC coating or whatever, comes on all this extra cheap wiring. And 
properly discarded that on the floor. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna get our soldering iron warming up. I'm gonna snip this wire, since this is our positive. I'm gonna do a little bit of stripping action. Hopefully YouTube doesn't flag me for saying that. Strip those off. I'm going to cut the ring terminal off this end of the fuse. Again, get rid of that. And I'm going to strip a little bit off here, maybe a little bit more now. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> originally when I started this YouTube channel, I had no intention of it ever becoming all about tractors. Um, I, uh, uh, well, without getting into my full career, um, my side job is uh, I do a bunch of LS swap, you know, engine stuff, um, build harnesses, do installations, tuning with HP tuners and Holly FI and all this other stuff. So this whole wiring stuff isn't super foreign to me. Um, but anyways, when I do that, I buy heat shrink in bulk from a website called buyheatshrink.com. And uh, sometimes they're not exactly the quickest to get shipped, but this stuff is uh, a four to one shrink ratio with adhesive line. And let me tell you, best shrink I've ever used. Well, I doubt. But can't seem to twist any wires together tonight. So. There's some people that freak out when you twist wires together because they're impossible to get back apart. But A, I don't ever want to take it back apart. And B, uh, without a third set of hands to hold it, I got no way of uh, holding all the wires together and feeding solder to it and holding the iron. So we're using a Milwaukee M12 soldering iron here. Very good iron. Although this one is my third one, I believe. But again, I put more hours on my soldering iron every year than... Actually, I probably put eight times more hours on a soldering iron every year than I put on the tractor. So, slide our shrink up on there. And uh, I'll go get this heat gun plugged in and shrink it away. Now I do not have the uh, cordless solder or uh, heat gun, and my reason for that is is the same reason that I hate cordless grinders because they suck up a ton of power and uh, they rip through some batteries pretty quick. But the cordless solder is not bad, especially with the bigger 6.0 battery in it, and uh, it does. Uh, not only does it last quite a while on a charge. Um, it does a good job as far as, like I said before, heating up fast and whatever. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect these wires. Gonna, okay, switch is working, so I've got everything wired correctly. I'm gonna push this back in place and hold my little ears over, make sure that's snapped in good. Okay, so I'm gonna feed my positive wire out. Okay, so we've got our positive wire and our ground, and you gotta put your nut on first. And I'm gonna feed them up through the hole, hold the nut back here, and then we're gonna plug our black towards our negative that's labeled on the back, and red to positive. Feed this back through and start tightening up our knot. And it looks like that inch and an eight, perfect size for that. That uh, fits pretty nice in that, actually with zero play at all. So I'm gonna get this nut snugged up on the back side here. And again, it's like anything else, it's plastic and made of Chinesium. Um, you're not gonna wanna 
brief this down real tight. I mean, it's actually got this rubber seal on here anyways, so that's gonna help kind of snug things down a little bit. Just so it all centers, I'm gonna make sure that's snapped on. But uh, that'll actually, the rubber will kind of crush it, actually help hold it on, so it's not like you need a pair of pliers or anything to tighten that down with. Okay, so now that's in. Now we know how long our ground is and what our options are as far as our ground wire goes. And I don't know if it's out of frame, it is. But right down here, my relays that I've got. That is probably our best spot for a ground because it uh, self taps, threads right into the, this sheet metal firewall here. And uh, we're gonna have plenty of length, it appears. So I'm gonna rig that up next. All right, so now I got our 5 16 socket here. And I'm gonna route this ground wire kind of down and out of the way so we don't have to worry about it um, sticking out and looking unappealing. Story of my life. And then, uh, let's try this. Go around the hydraulic hoses here. Right now and underneath these relays. So that's gonna work right there. And now our 5 16th or 8 millimeter, because it's the same thing. Take this off. One problem with self tappers is taking them back out. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm gonna swap our order around here so it looks a little nicer. Doesn't look like a total afterthought. And uh, let's tighten our relay back up here. Our new ground. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Get our console trim back on here quick, and uh, we'll plug it in and see if the phone works. So, I did just notice one thing, now if this is lit, it's lit up blue, it's got a blue LED on it. Um, I don't see where the LED is going to draw much of any power at all. Um, I guess it's actually easy enough to check with a meter, um, but uh, I guess if it turns out to be an issue, I can always try to find one that does not have the backlighting, because I do want this constant hot. Again, you could put it on a switch, and if that's the case, it probably would be even easier, especially if you don't have existing wiring, like my lights here, um, to tap into easily. Um, you know, I mean, you can always run your positive, just splice into this wire like I did, cut the ring terminal off, splice in, and then run it all the way up to the battery, like I've already got wiring that runs to my relays that are down here and the switch is here um but uh like i said i want to be able to plug phone headphones whatever in while i'm while i'm off the tractor doing work too so let's uh the moment of truth here let's plug that in here and since i'm filming with the phone i'll plug it into the headphones here and let's see what we get i got a white light they're full charge because they were charging in there on my truck, so that's good. Let's see what happens with the phone when I plug in here. Okay, it's not. Oh, okay, there it goes. So, yep, yeah, and it's charging my phone now. So, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Again, not super keen on the whole blue backlit thing, but again, it's. 
the tiniest of LEDs. I can't see where it's actually gonna draw any real amperage. And uh, I mean, I guess if you were to let your tractor sit for three months at a time, maybe you'd have a problem. But uh, it's rare that this goes a week or two weeks tops without getting used. So I don't see where it'd be an issue. Okay, and again here from the operator station, it's uh, you know pretty good and centered with the key. Looks symmetrical from here. And I'm gonna plug this in quick. And again, nowhere's near my leg. You know, I guess if you, I'm six foot exactly, but uh, I guess maybe if you were a little shorter, your leg was short or something, and you sat up closer, maybe you could bump it. But I get into the steering wheel long before I'd hit that. And this is a six foot cord. It's very excessive for this, but uh, you know, I'm sitting here and I have zero issues getting this close to the phone and hooked up. So what do you think, dude? Good install, right? Not bad. We give this like a like a one and a half out of ten, right? Give me something. All right, thanks for leaving me hanging there. All right, so once again, there is the completed install of my new uh, USB port, charger port, 12 volt port, whatever you want to call it, on the tractor. Um, I do still want to get around to the video of installing the Plano uh, tackle box looking deal that I got, storage box for the back. Um, I just, I've been so busy with four L, no, four, five LS swaps, um, a wedding in two weeks, and get back to school. Life's been hectic. So I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, I'll have to get this back out to the shop for that because I'm going to end up probably building a little frame for the bottom of the box and then bolting it to these tabs just so it uh, is a little more supported um, so I can put weight from shackles and chain and whatever else in there. Um, but if there's anything else you guys want to see with the tractor, let me know. Um, I know a couple of people have commented, um, um, the video of turning the power up about adding a turbo. That's not going to happen. Uh, not at least until YouTube's making me enough money that I can risk blowing this up. And, uh, yeah, again, if there's anything you want to see as far as the LS stuff, I haven't really posted much of that just because I'm not trying not to flood YouTube with the same videos everybody else has out there. But you guys want to walk through on harnesses, how I build my fuse relay boxes, um, HP tuners doing basic stuff with a computer, um, or full start to finish on some of the swap projects. Just let me know. Um, and like I said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, subscribe thing's huge. I'm almost at a thousand. I'm at 998. So maybe be the guy to push me over the edge, guy or gal. So I appreciate it. Thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time.